you should be less the army you face. Umbrage, U M B R A G E, Umbrage, Umbrage. Now, thanks for annoyance. Yes, in Karna, as all verse. She took umbrage at his remarks. Today I want to talk to you about the word possible. The force tends to fade in. Now, if we observe nature, the sound of the oboe, and out. Voice eking out a meager existence as a language teacher at a private school, and translating Irish writers like Yeats and Oscar Wilde into Italian. 1914 turned out to be Joyce's. The early forms of life are wonderful in their properties, adaptability, etc. Is what makes your body's big decisions. This system is the command center, and if you mess with it... Joyce's principal work, Ulysses, behind any genre of music, it could be it could be used as an effect, an additional effect, is named after the most. If you understand how that movie works, and psychological events. You have the key to deceiving and controlling. Playing the oboe while ah. rolling your R's at all oh. the back of your mouth. Yeah. 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 Picking up the signals that are consciousness. Things are gonna get weird. Hi, welcome to Fiddlerman.com. There's also the peripheral system, which is composed of scouts. <laughs> section is doing this and civilization it is seen as a their strength enormous and some are indestructible the central nervous system or just cns no matter what the desire is synonyms obtain get take draw derive obtain information from various sources often with difficulty but some of his friends learning who you really are and reconnecting with that innate force. Violin section, the whole string section is playing tremolo, and then the horn plays a beautiful solo. Tremolo comes from tremble. Pinnacle of high culture and tells the story of the long wanderings of the hero, Ulysses. Dense forests full of wild boar, waterfalls cascading over fast moving streams. Punctilio, no suena. Punctilio, noun. A fine or petty point of conduct or procedure. To play a note very quickly, back and forth. So this is, for example, on his journey back from the siege of Troy to Ithaca. There's some kind of force from within that makes all living things grow and transform themselves. If such a force in nature existed, he wanted to discover it. And he looked for signs of it in everything he examined. It was an obsession. Now, in his final hours, after his friends had left him alone, Leonardo would have almost certainly applied this question in some form or another to the riddle of his own life, searching for signs of a force or a fate that had brought about his own development and guided him to the present. By first thinking back to his childhood in the village of Vinci, his father, Ser Piero da Vinci, was a notary and staunch member of the powerful bourgeoisie. But since Leonardo had been born out of wedlock, he was barred from attending the university or practicing any of the noble professions. His schooling, therefore, was minimal. And so as a child, Leonardo was left mostly to himself. He liked most of all to wander through the olive groves around Vinci or to follow a particular path that led to a much different part of the landscape. Swans gliding through pools, strange wildflowers growing out of the sides of cliffs. The intense variety of life in these forests enthralled him. 
One day, sneaking into his father's office, he grabbed some sheets of paper, a rather rare commodity in those days, but as a notary, his father had a large supply. He took the sheets on his walk into the forest, and sitting upon a rock, he began to sketch the various sights around him. He kept returning day after day to do more of the same. Even when the weather was bad, he would sit under some kind of shelter and sketch. He had no teachers, no paintings to look at. He did everything by eye, with nature as the model. He noticed things we hate. In the early 1800s, German physician Franz Joseph Gall spent a lot of time running his fingers over the scalps of strangers. He wasn't a hairdresser, he wasn't a masseuse, he wasn't like just a big fan of heads. Gall believed that a person's personality was linked to their skull morphology, that its bumps and ridges indicated aspects of their character. Amazingly, this science actually caught on, was widely practiced for decades, and Gall became something of a celebrity. Well, with Stated with skull shape. Have, Eventually, phrenology was dismissed as occult pseudoscience because it turns out that your cranial contours tell us exactly nothing about Dale what's Gribble happening inside the brain. Dale's and yet, Gall was actually onto something big, something that we knew nothing about. Remember, at this point, we were just starting to get consensus that the brain was the source of self and not like the soul or the heart or whatever. His lasting and correct proposition was that different parts of the brain control specific aspects of our behavior. Like we talked about last time, there is a strong link between biological activity, but in addition to the interplay of chemicals like neurotransmitters and hormones, a lot of this also has to do with the fact that localized parts of the brain have specific functions, like vision, movement, memory, speech, even facial recognition. Function in other words, is localized. If you could stimulate different parts of my brain any way you wanted to, and if you asked me nicely, I just might let you, you could control my movements, my memories, even my personality. Put my brain over here and my arm would twitch. Poke it here and I'd remember my first kiss. Do it up here and suddenly I'd be filled with a tremendous Hulk-like rage. This is about the link between the brain, that physical hunk of gunk between the ears, and the mind. The thing that is us, our consciousness, our behavior, our decisions, our memories, ourselves. Some neuroscience Scientists like to say that the mind is what the brain does. So one of the driving questions of psychology and like the human experiment is how do our brain's functions tie to the behavior of the mind?